Hi, and uh, uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro, the COVID-19 version. Um, we're, we have repurposed these shows um, so as to focus, to help seniors who are at home deal with these issues. As you know, the point of the Frank and Mary show is Frank and Mary are my make-believe couple that I always talk about. Um, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. We always talk about Frank and Mary and their goal in life, which is to live in their house and, until they die and be buried in the backyard. So right now, Frank and Mary are homebound, can't get out of their house. They're totally stuck. They're here in Northboro. And one of the things that they are thinking about, and we know you're thinking about, is kind of how the rest of the world is working. And so my, my wonderful co-host, Chris Linquist, uh, from the library who agreed to, to be my co-host uh, has been charged with finding the people that you need to know uh, and to, so that you can hear about the programs you need to know about, right? Uh, so Chris, thank you very much for getting another great guest for us here today. Uh, and, and I know that you're not at the library today, but your, your, your library is still going and we'll talk about the library a little bit at the end, right? But sure. whom do you have here today for us to talk to? So uh, very happy to have uh, the fire chief, David Ferrenti here with us, Arthur. And, uh, you know, David obviously is uh, probably working around the clock, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you're getting some sleep. But, you know, they have an emergency management team uh, at the town. And uh, I'm sure David will be able to tell us uh, some details about what's been happening behind the scenes. So I'll, I'll just let you uh, go ahead and ask him some questions. And, and, that, and that's great, David. I guess we'll both be kind of asking questions, but I think, you know, if once again, if I'm Frank and Mary, I'm at this point like totally stressed out, right? I don't, you know, I'm stuck at home. I don't have an easy way of kind of finding out what's going on. I don't even know, are there COVID-19 cases here? If there's a person who shows up with COVID-19, how does that get dealt with, right? And 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 what and what are the various things that the that the players on the on the group that you're really directing now are doing in order to try to deal help people deal with day to day life and deal with what could be an emergency? We 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 all know that we're going through what could be some really hard times right now. How how should folks be dealing with all that stuff? Yeah, those are all great questions, and it's uh it's been pretty crazy for the last three weeks. What we've been doing is we meet. Uh, at least once a week, uh, sometimes twice a week, and we've been meeting through Zoom now. And the team consists of uh, myself as the fire chief and the emergency management director. I hold both positions, lucky me. Uh, the, the police chief. Do you get a lot of extra pay for that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I get a lot of extra hours for that is what I get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this the, is when you earn your pay, right? Yeah. Now, right? The police chief, the uh, town administrator, uh, the financial director, uh, Jason Little, also, uh, Andy Dowd, our town clerk, because he's coordinating all of our posts on uh, on our website. Uh, we have uh, Greg uh, Martineau from the school district as the superintendent. Scott uh, Shrepentier, who is our DPW director. And then they have some other people with them that are in there, their assistants. And we and we do this via, via Zoom, which is a terrific. I wish I had stock in Zoom because uh, <laughs> people have been going crazy on it. So, so and also uh, our current uh, Ellen, who is our current uh, uh, acting or interim uh, senior, center. Uh, senior center director. And the new director is supposed to be taking over, I believe, in four days. <laughs> yes. So I'm not quite sure if yeah. she wants to uh, step in and do that right now. And uh, but so we all meet via via this uh, uh, via Zoom. And before that, we were meeting in person to discuss uh, to coordinate all of our responses. And one of the big things we wanted to do is make sure we had a a standard message that came out from the town. It's very simple for the police to put out a message and then fire to put out something different and schools to put out something different in the town hall. So we created a team that consists of myself, Casey, who is our um, our, our board of health uh, uh, person. He's our uh, health officer, the police chief and the town administrator. Every single thing that goes out through this town is vetted by all four of us. So we all are sitting and sending the same message out. Then our other big concern was how are we going to get the message to the seniors? Some of them don't use... Uh, Facebook, aren't on uh, mm -hmm. in, in Instagram, don't uh, access the, inter the internet through different ways. So how are we going to get that message out through there? So we were trying to coordinate that through the senior center and making sure Ellen got that, Eileen, excuse me, got yes. that information out. Mm -hmm. So that was our goals. And then our biggest concern for the elderly initially was um, how do we maintain them getting their services? We were concerned with their with uh, with the bistro because a lot of people come to the bistro every day at the senior center to eat. 
So if that shuts down, or if we shut the senior center down because that was a high risk category, how do we maintain this? And uh, we've been able to do that through the bistro so far, but people only about 16 to 17 people a day have been taking advantage of that. So we're kind of surprised. I thought that number would be a little bit higher. We were preparing meals, putting them at the curb. People would come by, pick up their meals. Now we're looking at actually shutting the bistro down. So what's our next step? Our next step is to coordinate with the high school and the high school is going to take that over because they're doing meals. The school district is doing meals for the students uh, who are on uh, the free lunch meals and that every other day. They're going to take over the feeding of these seniors. Right. So it's been pretty crazy. You know, the, the, the best way for them to get information without question is the town website. Yep. That is the, the, the best, the most reliable. And that's going to point them to CDC and to the Mass Department of Public Health. The problem is there's too much false information out there. Social media, one of our, I want to say it's a great invention, but one of our newest things out there, <laughs> unfortunately provides too much false information. And uh, people are getting, seniors are getting calls from their children, from other people saying, hey, I just saw this. You need right. to be careful of this. Or I just saw this. And then, of course, because we live in a society that, that this happens on, scams are starting to come out and people are starting to take advantage of elderly, taking advantage of the seniors and saying, hey, we're here to clean your house. No, we didn't set that up. So don't let people in your house. Call us if you have that question. Call us if you need food. Either, call, either contact the senior center contact the fire department, contact the police department, and we'll coordinate all that stuff for you. I get it. And so for, and for, so for seniors who are, who, by the way, who are facing just that, you know, we're facing yep. some kind of scams. And I know Chris and I had also talked about, you know, talking to the police chief sure. about, you know, talking about trying to deal with some of those issues. For those folks, they can literally call any one of those numbers because you guys are all connected, right? Correct. So it's police or fire or the senior center, and they can help you figure all that stuff out. Right. May I yeah. ask a question? So, David, that's obviously not a 911 call. It's not an emergency, but that would be a normal business call, correct? Correct. If, if you call the business line and for the fire department, it's 508 393 1538. 24-7, there's somebody here. Uh, and if there isn't, it rings right through the police department. If we're all out in the calls, we're all busy. So, you're going to get somebody if you call that number. Uh, tell them who you are, what's going on. The police chief and I, as well as the town administrator, are in the in the uh, uh, health officer Casey are in contact twenty four seven, so if it's something I can't answer, I can immediately reach out to to one of the other ones. So my guys would call me. I would then in turn call whoever would need to be called. And, and by the way, David, one one of the reasons why Chris and I are kind of are, are decided to do this show or to kind of repurpose the Frank and Mary show is we realize that for a lot of seniors who you know may not have zoom they may even not be you know crazy about their internet i still i do nothing but elder law so i've still got a lot of people oh yeah that i'll i'll ask i'll you know i'll be communicating i'll say do you want me to email you or mail and they'll say well you know i've got internet i said no that's not the question do you want me to email or mail well maybe you should drop a line in the right because they're not comfortable with it. so right. one of the ideas behind the show was we realized that just about everybody especially folks who are seniors have got cable Yep. And this, we really figured this is a, it's, it's a wonderful, we really want to just do another shout out to the Northbro Cable yep. for the great job they're doing and just helping people be able to stay in touch this way, right? So it's yeah, just- Yeah, and, and, and they've been pushing out all of our stuff as well. So if, you, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're on Northboro Cable and you go to their, their information channel, all of the information will be, this is where you go, our weekly updates are there. So it, it gives our current, our current counts on how many people in town are are infected. Yeah. Our current information from the from the um, fr from the uh, the state. Uh, one of the best things they can do is 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 get a hold of uh, the COVID MA through their phones. Most of them will have phones that have text capability, and if they yeah. if they text uh, uh, COVID MA to eight 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 seven seven seven, it will get them. They'll get daily updates from that uh, from that site. And can David, you, you're can also, you do that number again? We'll also make yeah. sure that Northboro posts that number. Yeah, it's it's COVID. And hang on, let's, let me look re real quick because I'm getting a gazillion other things here that are coming in as I'm. Uh, hang on, COVID MA. So you you, you yeah. send it to 888 777. 888 777. That's really straightforward. Yeah. That's great. And, COVID and, and, MA 888 777. Yeah. Yeah, and so if you text if you text that to eight 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 seven seven seven, you'll be automatically logged in, 
And I just got another update today. It tells you uh, uh, all kinds of information. Here's uh, here's our actions to support expended healthcare. Here's our actions for essential business closures. So they can look at that, click it on on their phone. It'll give them all great information. David, you're, you're also in, in continual communication with FEMA and MEMA, correct? With the federal and the state emergency management. Uh, Cor so correct. As the emergency management director, I have, uh, I log in probably uh, 20 hours out of the day, I'm logged into Web EOC. Web EOC is an electronic format and it's a, EOC is the Emergency Operations Center, okay? So the state has its own SEOC, State Emergency Operations Center, and each community has their own Emergency Operations Center. So as the Emergency Management Director, it's my responsibility to, to do that. I'm logged into there almost all day long. And that gives me constant updates on not just what our community is doing, but what others. So I put in what we're doing and then I can see what other communities are doing. And I go, hey, that's a great idea. We need to do that or, or we need to implement that. I bring it back to our team. We implement it or I bring it back to the team and we say, yeah, we don't want to do that. One of the things we're concerned with right now is housing for emergency responders. Well, we all have our own houses, right? Well, mm -hmm. true. But if police or fire get uh, exposed and become infected, we don't want to take it home to our families. Right. Okay, and we so we still we still need to be able to, to house us. That's a great that's a great point. I would cause I would think that must must ha happen with all you, you your first responders because boy, if you guys go, this is a big problem, right? Yeah, if nobody's there to respond. It must be similar with the with the healthcare players, right? Oh yeah, very Somebody, much. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Interestingly enough, my my oldest son is a physician's assistant down in Albany, Mass. He works Albany, Mass. Down in Albany Med in Albany, New York, and. Uh, New York City actually reached out to them and said, could you send some people down? Because they're just hurting for people terribly. And I don't think he's going. He may be. I don't know if he's needed more where he is right now, but we're in the same place. So what we've done is we've reached out to, uh, as an example, Northboro, uh, Westboro, and Shrewsbury have all talked. And we said, okay, if this happens, then this. So in other words, if, we, if I lose a whole shift, what are we going to do? If I, go, I have a whole shift that goes into quarantine. Right. Well, then we'll reduce our shifts from three shifts, from four shifts to three shifts. So instead of working 24 hours on, so many hours off, we'll work 24 hours on, th uh, two days off. And then we'll utilize Shrewsbury for additional fire response because they don't, they don't do their own ambulance. Shrewsbury has uh, a Worcester EMS, but we may need their fire response as we're running additional EMS response. So we've built all this into the system. We're also working with District 14, which is our local fire district, for additional uh, COOP, uh, co continuity of operation plans, how we're going to continue providing service to our whole fire district. David, in one sense, since there aren't many people on the road, and believe me, uh, you know, I, I actually go to the library two days a week. We're doing split shifts, so I go in on Monday and Wednesdays, and there's hardly anyone on the road now on the Mass Pike. It's mostly freight trucks and, yep. and a few a few cars, I guess. But um you're probably not responding to as many accidents now just because there's fewer traffic. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not just accidents, Chris, it's everything. Our call volume has bottomed out except for, you know, we're doing the COVID calls, but even that has, has dropped from when we first started and we're probably down, Oh, 20 to 30% of our normal calls. And I think we've uh, not just us, every, every community and police and fire across, across the uh, Commonwealth are all down and, so for people who would right. normally call the hospital for some right. things are saying, well, we don't want to go because we don't want to get caught. Well, that's great. Except if you're having chest pain, don't ignore it. If you're having headaches, don't ignore it, especially for our senior population, because there's no one there to check on you necessarily. Sure. Call us. That's what we're here for. We will be there without yeah. question. We may look funny when we come in because we'll probably have masks yeah. and goggles on because we have to treat every single case now as if it was a COVID case. Sure. Uh, there's been a lot of cases of us going, not just us, but departments going for a fall. Uh, we get called lots of times. I, I've fallen and I can't get up. And we come and we help pick you up. Right. Those people have turned out to test positive later on. So you're going to see us in full gear, mask, gloves, and eye protection, no matter what the call is. But please call us. Don't wait. We don't want you to wait until the last second and then call us. We're here for you. Call us. We hear a lot about PPE and the lack of PPE, obviously, in medical environments, but I assume you guys are well supplied with protect, protective equipment. Um, okay, b b bad assumption, but, <laughs> but, but good right now. So again, I'm going to take you back to that Web EOC. Uh, has the ability for me to put in, okay, I need this stuff. 
So I'll put, I put in a request two weeks ago for additional N95 mask and additional gowns because we, we have this thing called burn rate, which we track our burn rate. How quickly are we going through these supplies? And initially we were chewing up N95 masks pretty quickly. Uh, CDC and Department of Public Health came out with new guidelines as we don't necessarily need to wear N95s for every call we need, we can reach the word surgical mask. But I put in a request through uh, WebEOC yesterday, uh, they showed up with uh, 200, um, uh, 200 N95s, a uh, significant amount of hospital uh, surgical gowns, a significant amount of gloves. Uh, we just call them, they pull them out of the stockpile and they bring them to us. We are down lower on a lower scale than the hospitals because they're burning through them 10 times faster than we are. But we were able to get enough stock in yesterday, I think, to hold us through at least the surge that we're expecting around April 16, 17. So We're David, hoping. can can you just kind of talk a little bit to folks about what happens if somebody has has been tested and is positive, uh, or they're awaiting results it, it, here? Right now, we have we have twenty positive cases uh, that we're aware of that have come through public health. We are aware mm -hmm. of a few more simply because we've transported them and they haven't gotten into the public health network yet. They will, and, and we'll hear about it, but we're, we're, we're aware of a few more. So the process is this. It goes into, a, into a, uh, a software product called Maven, which is only accessible to public health. That has all the information about, about the patient. That inf the information that is trans uh, transferred to us, first responders, police and fire, is simply the address. So I'm told 123 Main Street has a positive COVID case. That goes into our computer aided dispatch, our CAD dispatch. And then when we're dispatched to that location, it comes right up on our in our in our rigs, positive COVID case at this location. Okay. So what happens is now so now we know that. We know that. They've also been advised when they uh, turn positive that these are the actions you should take. And the actions they should take is self quarantine for 14 days. That means no going to the store. No, no, no going out to, to visit anyone. No having your grandchildren come in. You need to be self-quarantined. The social distancing is the only thing that is going to work to, to flatten the curve and to stop this spread. Um, so they really need to adhere to that. That being the case, if they need something, call us. If you need groceries and you don't have anyone to go get them for you, call us. We will coordinate that. We're working with the school district with their buses. We're working with... Uh, the Worcester Transit Authority as well, and through the senior center. So if you need something, call us. We will make sure it gets to you. If you don't have, if you don't have family to take care of you, if family's going to take care of you, that's great. One of the things the hospital's trying to do is to, they're trying to divert and leave more people at home. If you don't need the advanced medical care and you can get through it, they're leaving you at home. But they're telling you, call if this happens, if this happens, if this happens. You know, right. Don't be afraid to call the fire department or the police department. We are here for you. Please call. That's just great advice. That's just great advice. And I suppose I suppose that just makes sense as far as the hospitals are concerned, yeah. too, because they, they've got to be trying to keep these beds freed. But as long as they know that you're there, you know, that if there's an emergency, mm -hmm. that you're going to get those folks there, it, 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 that takes care of that. And, and, and I think you really went, you, you went to kind of the heart of the issue with many of the seniors because many folks, as opposed to the old days when we were growing up, there aren't relatives around. You know? So you may be home. And you and there is no way to get your grocery shopping done, right? And 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 you may have somebody that was doing it for you, but maybe now they're really worried about leaving, right? So the notion right. that there's somebody in town that is figuring all that out for you is like a big deal. Yeah, th that is deal. actually that that's the that's the just about the, the first topic on all of our all of our Zoom meetings for our team is <laughs> are we addressing two major categories we're looking at? Are we addressing all the elderly needs and are we addressing all the younger people's needs? Are we getting food to those families that, uh, 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 those kids that need it? Are we, are, are we making sure they have what they need and the information they need? And are we getting to the senior populations, our, 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 our critical populations that we're concerned of? Most of us, I mean, I, I, I could call a friend and say, hey, go pick something up for me if I need to or whatever. Sure, right. But we're concerned about those. We're, we, I can't tell you the, that is our biggest level of concern are those two populations. That's why when Chris reached out to me and said, you want to do this? I said, oh, definitely. I want to do it. I want to get our message out there, but never be afraid. You'd be amazed how many calls we get from seniors and from other people that says, I don't want to bother you. Right. Are you kidding? That's why we're here. Bother <laughs> us. Right. 
call, speak to the on-duty captain, say, I have some concerns. And, and I, and even if, you know, if you call them and, and then we can direct you either through the senior center or through, um, uh, uh, through uh, June David Fords to uh, to other resources where if you just need someone to talk to, we'll sure. get you through that. Because you get lonely. Sure. Uh, I can understand that. So please pick up the phone. If you don't have internet to find out who to get a hold of through our website, pick up the phone and call the fire department or the police department and we will get you someone. David, a couple of things I've been wondering about, you know, is the Meals on Wheels program through Bay Path Elder Services, do we know if that's still happening or not? So, so Meals on Wheels has been an up and down thing. So, yeah, that, that was a, a big concern of ours. And uh, uh, we we're tracking that through uh, the senior center. So initially, yes, they were still up. And then there were reduced capacity down to um, only critical needs. So if there was people who were ha- homebound and they, you know, either they can't get out because of their of physical reasons or whatever, they were still servicing them. Then we heard they were right down and weren't doing it anymore. And the last one I heard was they're back up to the partial. So. Uh, that's where we're currently sitting to the best of my knowledge, but that could have changed this morning. Uh, and sure. I just haven't gotten an update on it. And also medications. If people can't get out of the house and they yep. can't go to the pharmacy, are they able to call you and the police to see if they can, I know there's obviously some, you know, I'm sure rules regarding that, but can you, the, help the, us? An, the short answer is yes. Okay. If, if, if you need uh, your meds, a lot of places will deliver, you know, that, that you can call them and say, Hey, I, I need my medication. I can't get out. Can you deliver it? And they'll do a, they'll drop it on your front. You know, we're coming, we're out front, we're dropping it off, pick it up. If not, call us. We will, you may not see a fire truck delivering it, but we'll make sure somebody is there getting it to you. Right. Um, either through the senior center, again, through us, through, through, uh, uh, through whatever we have to coordinate, we will get it to you. One, one of the things I always try to tell like my clients in these cases is never say no to yourself. Never say no to yourself. Don't assume yeah. The fire department's too busy. The police department's too busy. You know, you let them decide. You know, you let them, you call and then let them say, oh, geez, we're all going to a fire right now. We can't, you know, (laughs) you let them them decide that, right? Because they work for you. Because they work for you. But by the way, this just relates to just a kind of a related question. I would assume that everything you're doing, you know, causes a, you know, it's a lot of manpower that was yeah. doing other stuff and that is now trying to do this. So the question is, are there, you know, from, from your team or from you folks, are there any volunteer opportunities for people who, who are also at home and really feeling like they'd like to help out, you know, in any way that they think they could be useful? Yeah. Is there any place where they could help? Awesome question. Complicated answer. <laughs> okay. So this is not like your typical... We had a winter storm. We had a tornado. We need manpower. We need people out there. This is something we don't want you going to see somebody. Right. We don't want you uh, knocking on yeah. someone's door and coming there and saying, I'm here to cook your meal for you. Okay. So, right. so we have that issue. We also have the vetting issue. It's, it's like we have some good people, but like I said earlier, we got some bad people and we don't want someone to just show up the door. I'm, I'm here from elder services to help you. Well, who the heck are you? Right. Yeah. So there, 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 there is a, uh, again, we have a link off of our webpage and I know that, and I can get there, but you know, the best thing people can do is make a phone call to somebody. Hey, how you doing? You know, just touch right. base, pick up the phone and call out there and say, how you doing, Betty? How you doing, Tom? How you doing, Dave? Uh, I know you're lonely. Have you reached out to anyone? And that is so critical right now to, to know that they're not home alone. You know, they are home alone physically, but sure. we're there, we're there for them. And, and, uh, I would recommend that they, if they can get, uh, onto the, our, our webpage and again, any town webpage you go to, if you go to the fire departments, we have additional information, you go to the police department, but they're all going to point you back to the main COVID page okay. click on that and find out what can I do to help. And a lot of it is just those phone calls and donations. Those are, people are looking for donations. Um, if people have a little extra, that's fine. We have people coming in constantly wanting to bring us food, wanting to bring us uh, supplies. We have put in place a, a, a policy that says we can't take any home cooked meals Sim- for obvious reasons. Right. But right. if, if uh, we've had people bring in stuff from restaurants, we had, uh, oh, the guys were thrilled. Was it last night, the night before <laughs> Texas barbecue company came in. Here you go, guys. You know, you know, and, and, and that's great for us. Cause now we don't have to go shopping. Right. You know, right. Uh, so it's great for us. But if someone wants to volunteer, that simple phone call is really critical. But look online. There are other opportunities. We just can't have you going out there and, and, and volunteering and taking stuff to people because then you're going to get exposed. And 
it's really tough for us for seniors because they have so many other issues going on. They have a lot of what we would call comorbidities or, 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 or other illnesses that you may not, you may be okay normally, but because of all these meds you're on, because of all these other things you got going on, it's not a good idea for you to get exposed. So that's why we're, we, we don't want them just out there touching, you know, physically touching within the space. For sure. For yeah. sure. Chris, any, so that, other, any, any other questions? You know, I just wanted to say, David, that, uh, you know, you guys, you practice this. You, you do, uh, you know, tabletop scenarios. Yep. So you are well prepared. You've been doing this probably for your whole career, getting ready for these types of extraordinary circumstances, correct? And I know that, you know, Michael Browiak and, and you guys get together, I think, you know, a couple times a year, I've been a part of that, tabletop exercises. I don't know if, you know, getting ready for a pandemic has been part of the preparation, but obviously you have a command, you know, system that is in place. And I know I've taken the, I think the 100 and the 200 yeah. level, Arthur. Yeah. So there's an ICS uh, training, yeah. but I haven't taken the, I don't know, the advanced level, but obviously, you know, you, you guys are exceptionally prepared, correct? I've been in the fire service since 1979, since 1978, and, <laughs> and, and I've been a, a career firefighter since 1986, and I've been a chief officer since 2001. So I've been going to school preparing for this and working in emergency management for a long time. Uh, however, like you said, Chris, <laughs> you can't be prepared for this. Oh, my God, is this really happening? Pandemic. Yes. We prepare for right. natural disasters. We prepared for terrorist attacks. We prepared. And, yeah, we talk about pandemics and, and we, we have things that we work with the health department for point of distribution. If we it's like so let's say if they do come up with a uh, um, not, not a not, not a uh, uh, immunity, but but some kind of some kind shot of pill, right. People, right? Or, right. Then we would activate our point of distribution plan that we've trained on and put in place. We're good for that. But this is just something that luckily we're, we are falling back on. As you said, Mike Borowick, he's, he's, he works with me, emergency management. We're falling back on all our years of training and years of experience to say, what do we need to do? What's our next step? We're, we're not looking ahead one day. We're looking ahead 20 days. And that's what I was right. just, again, before I came in this morning, assigning my different officers to different things. So let's look ahead. What do we need to do in 10 days? Where do you need to be in 20 days? But it's funny when you describe all of that, you know, I say to myself, that's, that's why people became firemen, right? That's yeah. I, re, I, I have a, I have a cousin who, uh, who was, had been the state Senator out here, a guy named Bob Duran for many years, but he always, he really wanted to just be a fireman because he just wanted to be helping people. And I remember his mother saying, you can't do this. You have to go to college, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. but he said, but ma, this is what I really want to do. That's why people did this, you know? And so I, I could see, folks really rising to the occasion here because it really is special and they want to be helpful and, and they want to be, you know, open to, you know, the fact that this is novel, you know, that's one of the, you know, one of the challenges, that's the challenge of the job. You know, Arthur, it's, it's so, interesting. I've, I've had, I've hired guys who have uh, pre-med degrees. I've hired guys who have uh, been working in the, in, in, in this, in the uh, public sector, private sector, I mean, making a ton of money and says, you know what? This isn't what I want to do. I've always wanted to be in the fire service. I've always wanted to be an EMT, a paramedic, whatever. And I've hired these guys. And I'm like, are you sure you want to do this? Because you're taking a huge cut in pay. Yep. And you know what? They're thrilled. They're thrilled to be here and help them. Our guys are here every day. I haven't had one problem with anyone saying, oh, I don't want to come in. Nervous? Sure. Yeah, because they all have families at home. Here to here to do sure. their job and be here for you? Yep, we're here for you. That's great. Very good. So, so Chris... Yep. Chris, this was a pretty wonderful guest. Uh, you know, guest. you would say, you would said, oh, we have to get David Perendi. He'd be terrific. Blah, blah, blah. This is just, he, this is wonderful. This, this is, is really great. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you, David. We really appreciate it. And I think, Arthur, next week we're going to have Christine Alessandra from Bay Path Elder Service. Excellent. Yeah. That's, that's great. That's great. So really, thank you very much, Chris, for being willing to do this. Thank you very much, Dave, David, for doing this. You know, this is really, really valuable information. We're going to be doing these shows once a week. So, you know, we may, ha you know, have folks back or if you've got somebody that you think should be reaching out to the senior population, talk to Chris about it. We'll make sure that we, you know, we get them on here. All right. Yeah. Without so question, thank you, you, very much. you need to get Chief Liver in because he really needs to talk about the scams that yes. are going on and yes. how the police are, are, are dealing with that. And, and their department is standing up just like we are and some incredible men and women down there. And uh, I really thank you for the opportunity. If you want me to come back, give me a scream. And I'll come back. Will do. Thank you, David. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Arthur.
Chris, thank you. This is just wonderful. This is really Great. wonderful. And once again, a shout out. Thank you very much. Thank for you the guys. Folks from North Pro Cable. And uh, we'll see you probably next week at the next, next installment week. of Frank and Mary here in Northboro, the COVID-19 version. Thank you very much.